Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Now, those of you that follow the channel for a while, uh, you are aware that besides being a teacher, I'm also a motion graphics designer. And my favorite piece of software to work with motion graphics is After Effects. And I do spend roughly 80% of my time behind this software, creating templates, uh, projects for clients and so on and so forth. Now, regarding video editing, the software that I prefer to use while I'm working with After Effects is Adobe Premiere. Yeah. especially to edit small video clips I can adjust here and there and then import to After Effects and in After Effects I will do whatever I have to do to make a template and a creative project and so on and so forth so I just love that uh, workflow but there is another side of me which is the video editor like the obvious that I am uh, especially for YouTube and also for my uh, family videos that I produce every single year and the tool that I prefer for this a secondary task is uh, Final Cut Pro 10. Now, the first time that I did uh, try Final Cut Pro 10 was roughly 2012, 2013, and since then I didn't look back. To me, it is really easy to use, really simple, very fast editing and very fast on rendering even on uh, lower spec machines like the uh, most of the Apple machines that we find available for sale. Now, that being said, guys, there is a difficulty or there have always been a difficulty, at least in my mind, which is uh, this application, Final Cut Pro 10, is only for the Mac OS system. Unfortunately, there's not a version for Windows. So I've tried a lot of uh, applications through the years and I believe that the one that we are going to talk about today and I will show you on screen is is the one that I believe to be at this moment the closest to Final Cut Pro 10 on the Windows platform. Now that being said guys let's go straight for the video hope that you guys enjoy it and as always I'll see you in a few seconds. Okay guys, so first of all, we need to go to Filmora's website and I'll leave a link down below in the video description and download the software, which is available for free to test it out. And then if we like it, of course, we can purchase it depending on the option that suits us better. Now, once we download it and install it on our machine, we can start using it. And there are two options, the easy mode and the full featured mode, but even the full featured mode, it's really easy to use. And as I said in the intro, the first thing that comes to my mind when I open Filmora is Final Cut Pro 10. Now it's different as we will see, but with a lot of similarities, starting with a very friendly UI. And one interesting feature on Filmora is the effect store that has some really nice free effect bundles and also some premium bundles. And these will work very similar to Final Cut plugins. And although in my opinion, most of the times these will not be necessary as Filmora comes with a pretty big library, but it's good to know that we can expand if necessary in the future. Now, starting to work with Filmora, like I do with any other editing software, I did import some footages, which in this particular case has 129 video clips from my last review, the Voyo A1, which most of you probably have seen. And in this particular case, it can take a few minutes depending on how many clips we import. And once we have the clips, we can preview them and start to bring them to our timeline. Now, once we do that, we can then modify the clip, of course, and it will adjust to the timeline automatically, just like it happens in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, we can also adjust some settings like the contrast, saturation, brightness, tint, and also the color temperatures on the advanced color uh, tuning, which is really easy and intuitive to use. Actually, I'm recording this video because Filmora is really easy in general to use. And once we are happy with our timeline, we can add some music to it and we can import, of course, any music track of our choice or we can use some of the royalty-free tracks included with Filmora software. When we press the music uh, button, it will download from the servers and then we can just apply it to our timeline. And this will happen with uh, almost all the effects library. 
Now on the next tab we will find the text and titles uh, which contains almost 100 pre-animated titles, openers and text animations in general. Now all we need to do here is to choose a preset and we can preview it of course and then drag it into our timeline. And after that we can then modify the title by choosing a different font, color, size and so on just like on any text editor. And this will give us a really quick way of having a nice title in our videos even without knowing anything about video animation. And next we have the transitions which I use in almost any of my videos. Now Filmora has about 80 different transitions for us to choose from and you guys know me and you know the channel and the only transition that I use in any software is the cross to solve which is the one that you guys have seen a few times in this particular video that you are watching. But once again it's nice to be able to choose uh, because we are not all the same and we don't have the same taste so some of you guys might want to use some crazy transitions on your own video creations. Now to me the most important features on any editing software are the ones that we have seen so far. How we handle our clips if it's easy or not, titles and text animations and of course some transitions. Now Filmora has a few more features like the filters that we can apply and will give a complete different feeling to our footage especially when we want to uh, do a fast color change. Then we also has the overlays that will as the name states overlay a specific effect on top of our footage. And there are a few interesting ones here, especially those flares that I usually do them manually in After Effects when necessary. Now there's also a, a elements tab that will offer a lot of animations that we can put on top of the video to give a bit more life to it. And there are about 130 of them, so we have plenty to choose from. And there's also the split screen option which is great to see it available here. And I do say this because roughly about two years ago or so I did purchase a plugin for Final Cut Pro 10 just to be able to do this feature that costed almost the same price as Filmora does. But basically what this does is just an easy way to insert different video clips at the same time on the screen giving a real cool look. And for those of you that are asking yes we can do all this manually but it's totally worth it and a real time saver to be able to do this automatically like we can do it here on Filmora. And finally I also did some performance and rendering tests just because I couldn't help myself. Now as you guys can see on screen I'm using my kids gaming computer with an i3 4340 Oswald CPU and an Nvidia GTX 960 which will give us an idea of how the software will be handled by common systems available in our homes. Now regarding the editing part as you guys can see on screen the only thing that will push the CPU is when we scroll through the effects or transitions which happen in any other software but even then the experience is really acceptable and smooth for the most part. So definitely Filmora can be used even in low speed computers like the one that I'm using right now. And regarding the rendering part, I did create a 10 minute 1080 video timeline, applied transitions to all the clips and then rendered it as a H.264 1080 video clip. And it took roughly 18 minutes to complete. Just as a comparison, I did also create a similar timeline in Adobe Premiere and it took roughly 20 minutes to finish the task. And to be able to compare with Final Cut Pro 10, I did the same tests on my Mac Mini late 2012 i7 at 2.3 GHz with 16 GB of RAM, which took 5 minutes to render in Final Cut Pro 10, 15 minutes to render in Filmora and 19 minutes to render in Premiere. So in conclusion guys, Final Cut Pro 10 is still my favorite editing software, not only because it's simplicity but also because it renders faster than any other software that I've used so far. Of course it costs a lot more and it doesn't have so many effects like Filmora does, so we will need to purchase plugins on the side and it's only available on OS X. So if you are a Mac user it won't be an easy choice. On the other hand for those of you that use Windows 
Windows, the choice is a bit simpler. Because if you are looking for a simple editing software with a very reasonable price and it feels like Final Cut Pro 10 for Windows, then in my opinion, of course, Filmora at this moment is the closest that we can get. And that is it. We have reached the end of another one. Hope that you guys found this video useful. And if you did, don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.